This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 718 Tuesdays. We've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. And we are ready to have some fun here tonight and back at it. And we've already had about half an hour of chatting here on the live stream, of course. That's how we do. That's why you should join us here every Tuesday. But joining us right now, first of all, he is the only Mayhemer on the card uh, with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE, unless our new guest tonight has something he hasn't told me. He is in Beacon, New York, under strict lockdown, I believe, still. One Mad Mike. Sorg, um, I have a Lego update. You do have a Lego update. You did have one last I- night. I didn't. That's that's because when we got off last night, I'm like, you know what? I should build some Legos. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, so I, I've made uh, yeah another part of the larger Hogwarts castle, mm-hmm. um, complete with Professor Moody's Defense Against the Dark Arts class. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty great. Nice, nice. It's pretty great. Uh, not not too much really to speak of in this update, but it's 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 the little details. Like like there's a book. That opens up and teaches you how to cast Wingardium Leviosa. For those unfamiliar, this is what we do usually on Monday nights on the show. Yeah. On the, but, run, on the Monday Mayhem Wrestling Wrap Up. I'm on board, guys. I'm currently, as we speak, on the side. So every time you see me glance to the right, I'm working on my custom morpher. Look at that. Excellent. I Look just got it. my uh, custom green labels in. And <laughs> I got. And I was just telling Sorg how uh, people who cosplay as Power Rangers are very mean people and were not very nice to me. <laughs> When I was asking for advice on how to do this, and that's not just Tyler Klein. No, no, no. See, no, see Tyler's not a real fan because he's, he's a Blue Ranger, and I don't have any respect for those. Whoa, that voice! <laughs> that oh, voice. so so we got a Billy Basher in the house. <laughs> no, I, no, I like I like Billy, but uh, Tyler has actually turned me against all Blue Rangers oh, because no. he's mean to me. Oh no! Okay, that new voice, if you're on the podcast, is uh, the White Rabbit, Zach Rain, uh, Eclipse Champion. And also uh, a part of the Prospect Pro Wrestling roster joining us. How you doing, sir? I am great. I love coming on here. This is my <laughs> third. T- is this my third time? Your third time? We, we had you on a quarantine thing. What else did we do with you? We, were you on a, a, a watch along or something? Maybe that's what it might be. That was a okay, thing. This is the first time official. Don't don't get don't get cocky. Okay? <laughs> I'm the, hey, listen. Careful, I'm the, kids. I'm just, I'm just you're, happy you're just, about you're it. just you're just the gunner in the Falcon, all right? <laughs> Sorg and I are hot and chewy. That's, that's fine. That's that's listen, I, listen, I'm I'm more of a I'm more of a Mandalorian anyway, and I was one before the series. Okay, so like I've been oh, I'm OG. <laughs> this is your first encounter with Mad Mike, so that's that that, that this, this is the real trial by fire. <laughs> Honestly, me 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 slyly insulting yet at the same time having a shitty and grill on my face is the best interaction with yeah, I'm good. I'm friends with Bronco McBride, so there's <laughs> li- there's literally nothing you could hurt me with. They, yeah, they literally nothing punch each other. Go wrong. They nothing. literally punch each other in the face for fun. Uh, that other voice is okay. Rob. Cameraman Rob is with us back again. Yes. How you doing, sir? I watched wrestling. You watch wrestling with your you new watched cat. a lot of wrestling. With your new kitten. Yeah. This is my kitten. Where's uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> there's i don't know where yeah this is this is kimball i i just got her yesterday and she's pretty cool that's awesome yeah yeah yep, yep. uh, yes. so she's joining me on this and she doesn't know what i'm doing waving this the, my phone in front of her <laughs> because she's she's three weeks old and she doesn't know how to use technology <laughs> uh, you'll get her there you'll get her there yeah, yeah we can always use a new, a new camera cat uh, yeah. <laughs> Also, back on the show, we found him, Ronnie Starks. I feel like every time I see a Where's Ronnie post, I find you on the internet. Well, stupid storyline. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got an update for you guys, too, since you guys got cats and you got Power Rangers and you got Legos. I completed my Ghostbuster Kenner collection this week. Nice. 
I have everything now. Nice, so. nice, nice. Was that figures? Was that just figures or the vehicle was included? I, I, uh, I have all the figures right now. Yes. Uh, I just picked up the Haunted Highway ride. Oh, I don't know that one. Uh, it's the... You have it. It's the um, yellow one. Oh, the thing we broke when I was trying to figure out how to... Yeah, <laughs> I just bought yeah. oh, no. a couple of weeks ago. This thing's been sitting in a box for 20 years. Open it up. I wonder how this works. Crack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got to fix that. Yeah. According, then, to, according to a lot of footage I've seen on the internet, Legos are a lot cheaper right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It depends on where slash how you get them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. But, but, you know, when those stores reopen... There's going to be a run on. I have a feeling people will be lined up for blocks. Mm. <laughs> uh, well, that that uh, kind of fine uh, punnage is uh, thanks to being on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Please go check out this and more over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including the Monday Mayhem Wrestling Wrap-Up, where we just started talking about anime last <laughs> last night, actually. Uh, also, Indie Mayhem Show. We got a great show coming up this week, already in the can, uh, talking about the Devil Budokan book, which is out of my reach, to show you guys with uh, our buddy uh, uh, Bobby Williams, Robert Parker Williams, whatever you want to call him of as many names. And, uh, Bobby uh, Digital. And uh, Bobby Digital. I keep forgetting about Bobby Digital. Thank you, everybody, for reminding me about that one. And uh, <laughs> a, a Glenn Spector, a surprise, joined us on the Ooh. show, too, which meant it, it meant, which meant it obviously went nearly an hour as we were talking about uh, some good old Pittsburgh wrestling history. Uh, so I encourage you guys to go check that out when we launch it on the podcast stream later this week or check out the live feed that was over on IndieWrestling.us Facebook as well. And uh, I should probably really have the notes up. Please go uh, drop us a line at that email address. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0, at Mayhem, on the twi- at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Also, uh, uh, follow our Facebook page and our Wrestling Mayhem Show group. A lot of great things are happening with the group. We actually tried something different when the, uh, during the NXT In Your House pay-per-view, and we may do it again for payback. Instead of us broadcasting something, we just opened up the Facebook uh, rooms which is a new feature over there uh, in the group. So if you're part of that group, you can hop in and watch the show with us and chat with us uh, about the pay-per-view. Uh, so uh, so that was, I, I just kind of started and left and, and everything went fine, Mike, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it sure did for about 80% of it. Good. Fantastic. Uh, so a lot of going That's on there. And of course, we're here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook Live. We're now also on Instagram. We're on the, uh, what is that, a Periscope, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and the Sorgatron Media Twitch page. Uh, so if you guys are over there, once again, please uh, give a heart, give a favorite, a like, uh, share the show, watch part of the show. Uh, if you're watching us now or later, please help uh, other people find what we're doing over here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Also, so thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Our good friends at the fan of the show level. Bo Diggity! Woo! I knew that one. As well as for <laughs> first time, too. Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Team Hamifist, our friends of the Poppy Club, Bradley Brothers, Dave Potter, Daniel Towery, and Tina Keys, and at the Pizza Club, Doc Remedy and Cal Turner, and at the manager level, OccupyProWrestling.com and Farnsworth Investments. Thank you so much. You guys can support the show, too, at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Guys, there was some wrestling this weekend. There was some NXT in your house. We talked about it briefly uh, last night on the Monday Mayhem, a wrap-up. Uh, I think everybody here has had a chance to watch it. It's NXT, so I figure most people would have, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I, we're I good. With... <laughs> what, what's that? I, I had it on. I mean, I was paying attention and was watching it more at some points than others, but <laughs> I, I saw the whole thing. So we got we got to talk about the throwback on this one. I, I thankfully I did hop in as I talked about last night. I did hop in and watch a little bit of the original in your house uh, again because again not terribly familiar with the in your house era of, of shows. I've watched some matches here and there uh, as recommended, but uh, uh, I love the '90s throwback that we did on this thing <laughs> the yeah. entire night. Um, um, I don't know if in your house was already on the books as as, as happening before all the plans have changed, but so happy they, they, they went with this. Uh, what, uh, Ronnie, uh, uh, judging by your throwbackiness of your, uh, your Ghostbusters Kenner complete collection over there, uh, what were your thoughts on it? I loved NXT. It was so good. I love the paid for by the following. And then they had, uh, 
what was it Icon Pro? Like Ico. the old Oh, oh God, yeah. Ronnie, 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 Ico Pro. Ico Pro. Sorry. And if you're gonna say it, you That's have to respect. say it with a British accent. Icon Most Pro. Consideration paid for by the following. Paid for by the following. Yeah. Like you have to do a Lord Alfred Hayes voice. You have to. That's that's just how this works. <laughs> I, 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 uh, Todd Pettengill on the show was mm-hmm. great too. Mm-hmm. I popped for Todd Pettengill. Uh, it was great. I loved it. NXT was really good. Todd P- Todd Pettengill is still the best person they've ever had at doing Todd Pettengill's job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see what you did there. That was. Uh, that I mean, fun. no, it, no, no. It's true. Like they've gotten many people to try and be Todd Pettengill. None of them are as good as Todd Pettengill. You should give him his job back. Like you could, you could do a fusion dance of Sam Rob Sam Roberts. Um, Pierre Rosenberg and fucking Pat McAfee, like a triple fusion oh. of all of them, Ugh. and they still would not oh. be Todd Pettengill, but they'd be much easier to kill. By the way, all those people—I don't people think, were, I, don't think all I could people identify were, any of them in a police lineup. There's that too. Uh, and all of them were on the kickoff show too, and that was kind of brutal. Yeah, yeah. I didn't watch mm-hmm. the kickoff show for a reason. Uh, it's, yep. it's not. It's not great. By the way, I I, I was curious because you say you know you know. As if Todd Pettengill is is like destitute right now because he's not working in wrestling. Uh, <laughs> he actually works most recently, according to his Wikipedia page, uh, as a disc jockey in uh, the New York area. So that's what he did when he did the first in your houses. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, yeah, he, he never he, left. He's, he's yeah, he's a local New York DJ. Like, that's how they knew him. Mm. There's so much crossover between wrestling announcer, like, well, I don't know, if, like even commentary and like disc jockeys, like um, Eclipse. Eclipse, I think two out of their three are local radio personalities, mm-hmm. and I think one of the former ones also was. Wow. So it's like I, th- I feel like you just adapt to that. Well, yeah, uh, uh, the 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 ring announcer for RWA for so many years works with, I think, Star. Uh, it, when we did prime wrestling, there was some disc jockey guy that did an appearance. I, I, I did Vic, uh, Vic, uh, uh, I can't remember, Vic Joseph now. Uh, I, I don't know if he might have came from radio as well. Uh, Ted Hallowell. Yeah, yeah Ted. Ted, Ted, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ted that, that we know from Revenge and, and 2PW. Um, it, yeah, no, that, that, that's, that is a really tight crossover, isn't it? Good voices, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That's true. Plus, Ted's, you might, plus you Ted's might get, my favorite. Like like with radio too, it's like you know, there's maybe different things they have to do. Like say it's like, oh, you read news, you do whatever where you're not always on, maybe mm-hmm. if you even if you do some character stuff or you've got a personality thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Whereas it seems like maybe if you go right into like wrestling announcing or something, it's like maybe you're trying to force some stuff that's not you know, it's like get good at your job first and then it's a it's a, it, 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 it is, it's a general media thing because uh, yeah. yeah, I'm thinking Mark Maddens, I'm thinking uh, Bubba the Bulldog. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot that kind of crosses over there. Uh, there. You know, think think uh, our boy the Rev Ron Hunt and the great stuff that yeah. that he does as a TV personality. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I don't know, I I, I guess you know the, those with communicate of PB. We had this uh, conversation with PB Smooth. Like like the wrestlers with communication degrees tend to. Mm-hmm figure out communicating a yeah. lot a lot more between promos and media and social media because that's kind of that all inclusive world right mm-hmm. so uh but no yeah, no that was that was great to see and everything from like the original <laughs> we were talking mike and i were talking about last night about the uh upgrades of the ring doorbell and the uh the the thermostat on the <laughs> On the yeah. in your house mm-hmm. set, and, and the and the portrait of Doc Hendricks, and a portrait of Doc Hendricks. Yeah, it was uh, so, uh, no, they had a lot of fun with that, and I, I think that's what they need. You know, I I love that in a pinch, like WWE seems to te- trend towards the goofy. And but and I was just thinking too, like you know, okay, yeah, they just dug that shit out of the warehouse. Oh you yeah, know? oh yeah, and, and so which makes me wonder, are are, are we gonna get? Like at least part of a backlash set. No, <laughs> you know, can no. I, can I get the giant oh, hooks? That was, that was, the giant yeah. hooks that they swang on the one year. Yes. Like the pendulum? Yeah, like it's the size of like, the, the center. There, there's a very specific reason why we're not getting that. Yeah, because the backlash has to focus on the greatest professional wrestling yeah. match oh. in all of uh. history. I hope it's like a two second match. Yeah. Yeah, like, I hope the bell sounds and Orton kicks him in the dick. Yeah, that's it. 
Like, I don't. Like, I'm not. I'm not watching out of protest of how he uh, acted about the NXT show. <laughs> what, what did is, he? What did he say, Zach? That got you so upset. <laughs> so here's my thing: is like I don't. I don't get to watch a lot of the product anyway. Like I'll specifically turn it on to watch guys that like I know. Like, mm-hmm. um, like obviously, like Seth Rollins was like I knew him obviously like way before you know, he was on TV and stuff. Then, so like, I try to watch his stuff where, and a lot of NXT, cause like there's a million of our friends on there now, mm-hmm. but like, okay, it's one thing to criticize and be like, Oh, I don't really care for the super indie or, Oh, they don't sell <laughs> enough. But like, just to blatantly be a jerk and be like, what was it? Uh, I'm, I'm slapping my leg for you guys. Good job. Is that what yeah. he said? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like I forget who someone responded to that with the Tomoso pic- Chompa. Well, no, yeah. no, but but beyond but beyond Champa, there was someone else who responded with a video of The Rock punching Eddie Guerrero and <laughs> slapping his leg with every punch. <laughs> so, and they were like, "Yeah, leg slapping really did nothing for this guy except make him the so, world's biggest Hollywood star." Yeah. So, 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 I did, so, so, I, I, I responded to it, and I mean, not that anybody cares. I'm a D-list <laughs> celebrity, as we all are. Um, but we, uh, I just said, I was like, "Hey, do some more headlocks. Can you do some more headlocks, please?" <laughs> um, I do want to ask him to do more headlocks. I, I do have to watch it. Unfortunately, I did like but, his yeah. promo last night, though. When he comes out, well, it wasn't really pro- or interview segment where he comes out and you, you know it's like you know Charlotte between you and me you know <laughs> you know like the, there might be somebody else coming out for you know like but see the thing like, is he didn't yeah I know but <laughs> and 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 Charlie oh poor Charlie she was counting on her fingers mm. I'm like mm. Charlie it's two you don't so- have to fucking count it. Like so, real, like real, that's literally the least subtle Randy Orton has ever been about anything. So, real quick, real quick, just just to recap what he what he said. The tweet in, in question is heard heard uh, NXT uh, takeover in your house was great. Uh, slapping my leg for you guys and seriously hashtag leg slap. Uh, apparently, Champa requ- uh, uh, re- replied, "My daughter has been having some trouble sleeping. Luckily, I found a remedy. Randy Orton matches better than NyQuil. Sincerely, hashtag an entire locker room who busted their asses. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's... And, and to be fair, that's not fair to Randy Orton. His promos can also help cure insomnia. Okay, okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> True. Like, literally anything after his program with Mick Foley puts me right out. <laughs> I feel so bad about it too because I remember like and again like it's showing my age but like the legend killer phase was like mm-hmm. my damn like I really liked that I thought it was good and then everything since I'm like ah oh, it's just not as good no yeah, I I, think- I've been rewatching some of the stuff from that that era like that 2004 2005 2006 and it's like it's crazy that it's like, oh, that was 15 years ago. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was that was 15 years ago, 16 years ago, and stuff. So that that stuff that like you really like, you know, it's it's like wow, that dude. was the beginning. Yeah, Ronnie, the dude's, dude, the dude's awesome. Like he yeah. is a solid American style professional wrestler. He's he's, I mean, and look at everything he's done. But man, boy, do I miss the old gimmick, <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie. You're trying to say. I was going to say, the older we get, the more we realize how boring Randy Orton really is. <laughs> um, hey, Ronnie, Ronnie, I knew how boring he was in 2004, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I knew Randy Orton worked up to his opponent and then mm. stopped. Mm. <laughs> mm. Like, oh my god. When, when one of your signature moves coming up is the same thing that rugged Ronnie Garvin did... <laughs> you really need to recontextualize everything. Because, you know, not for nothing, everyone gave Cena shit all the time. Mm-hmm. Cena busted out a springboard stunner when he was filming Bumblebee, for fuck's sake. Mm-hmm. Like, he didn't have to do that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cena was getting ready for fucking franchises. He didn't have to bust out a springboard stunner mm-hmm. or a code red. Randy's like, guys, I have a new headlock. This time, I crank the neck. That's good shit, brother. That's how good many, headlocks. Wow. How many how many guys do you see do their bump and feed without moving their feet? <laughs> like <laughs> it it makes me so angry every time. I've literally turned yeah. like I don't get like again, I don't get to watch the main product as much as I'd like, but every single time I see a standing still bump and feed, I change the channel. Like mm. that's that. 
Well, yeah. maybe he just said because it was easier for the 2K animators to, to come up with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just imagining... Uh, oh, you ever played the game Pit Fighter? Mm-hmm. Yes. 30 years yeah. ago? Mm-hmm. Well, it's one of the first like digitized characters, you know, where they don't animate above the legs, I think. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just literally a static guy just moving. Literally moving, just left and right, and not leaving their feet, not <laughs> showing any kind of emotion. Like, Randy Orton's biggest spot that he's had in the past five years was catching Jeff Hardy from the top of the hill on a cell. Yeah. Like, that's been his biggest spot, and he literally just was like, eh? Oh, got him. <laughs> that was it. Or that the, was the finish of that match. Or the, when was it? No, it was like WrestleMania 30, so it was like six years ago. The the pop-up RKO on Rollins. Oh, no, that was 31. That was 31. That was pretty, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, standing uh, in one place, putting yeah. his mm-hmm. arm up and falling down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. like, and he gets so much credit for the fucking Evan Bourne one. I'm like, no, Evan Bourne gets credit for the Evan Bourne one. Like, come on, Evan yeah. did all the work, and Randy's just like, oh, okay, I got you. And that was uh, still just a big flying nothing too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like a I'm jumping into this move. Hey, it's a great you know athletic move, but I have no idea what it was intended to, mm-hmm. <laughs> to to really be <laughs> well guys oh, well guys if you want something that uh you know a little more exciting <laughs> yeah or people that if you see if you see a lazy bump and feed zach will probably personally say something to them about yeah. <laughs> so you can check out oh, what's going on over at indie wrestling.us i know it's been a little quiet with the lack of wrestling shows over the last several months but we've been doing a lot of content there so a little bit of stuff going over on the indie wrestling network and of course you got that uh big back catalog i know some people have been diving in the last couple of years of rise wrestling uh prospect basically the entire run of prospect pro wrestling uh and uh, you can see our boy zach rain here as a part of that you can see ronnie starks in the many places that he shows up uh <laughs> as well and uh and, and all of our friends over there and also of course the big news that, that dropped here this past sunday is uh the return of new wrestling to the internet as uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling's uh, training sessions uh, concluded uh, recently. And uh, the, that first match is actually going to be debuting Wednesday night on Prospect Pro Wrestling social media. It will be a live premiere over there on the uh, Facebook page for uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling. So I encourage everybody to go check that out. Uh, so uh, and, 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 and a part of that, there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on, including the quarantine challenge. And, uh, you know, I, I know we, we don't know quite yet, uh, uh, Zach, your partner uh, over there. But we do know that uh, you are in the debut match that is going on uh, tomorrow night on that Facebook page uh, with uh, a submission match with, we've mentioned him, I, I think it was on show or before show. Uh, your your violent friend Bronco McBride <laughs> over there. Friend friend is a very strong word. Most people, it's it's frenemies is how mm. we're referred to. But I don't know a more accurate way to depict it. So we'll we'll go with that. <laughs> so uh, you know we we we've been talking about kind of the 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 evolution of what WWE AEW has been doing with these empty uh, arena kind of situations. Uh, you know, and again, you know, everybody's kind of adapting to things, and this is an opportunity yeah. for. Uh, uh, the roster of uh, 2PW to kind of get together, uh, you know, kind of, it was kind of a celebration of the end of the, of the official lockdown that at least like a group could gather and, 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 and uh, 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 move forward and, and, and do some stuff with wrestling. Um, what, 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 how was that to kind of wrestle just in front of your peers there? I'll tell you what, I, I thought it was going to be weird because like I've, I've been very vocal. Like I'm thrilled that, they're still wrestling. I'm thrilled that everyone that's making a, you know, their full living at it is still doing it and that the fans have something to watch. Cause there's, I can't remember who it was, but one of the indie guys said, um, I grew up, I grew up being made fun of because wrestling was fake and now it's the only real sport left. Screw you. And I, <laughs> I, I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. I was like, that goes on your tombstone. But, um, 2PW was different, like, and it always is. Like, I, I am adamant. Like, out of all the places I've worked, it's my favorite place, mm-hmm. and the roster is probably a big part of that. Like, they were so supportive of each other that it was unreal. Like, I, I know that, like, even certain matches, like, once everybody kind of got used to it, mm-hmm. 
I think we were just as happy as everybody else was. Like people were clapping and like there were a couple matches that were really good too. And you would think like you're not going to, you'll always hear the guys that are like, Home, how's the gate guys? Mm, <laughs> we'll see what I'm at. We'll see what I'll do tonight. There was no, there was no gate, and we like some of the guys went just as hard as they would in front of you know a couple hundred people. It was it. I think everybody was thrilled to be in the ring. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and I know like a, a lot of people kind of you know I'm seeing training sessions and things like that, and of course you know in, in those I know there's there's you know practice matches and things like that, but like this was kind of you know no pomp and circumstance, you know just like seeing if everybody can get used to it. Most people you know we've talked about so many times over the quarantine. Uh, 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 gatherings that we've had on Indie Mayhem show, I was like, man, what's going to happen at that first bump yeah, uh, for a lot of you guys? Were you were you standing out there when I just walked like right? I think it was right before the first match that like my first training match or whatever. And I went out and I just like bumped as hard as I could, and mm-hmm. everybody was like, "Why'd you do that?" And I was like, "Because uh, I want to make sure I'm not going to throw up." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's uh I, I missed that. I mean I'm probably setting up my own stuff, but um <laughs> geez. I, I, I feel like like I didn't feel like a lot of people got in there and did that. Like like for warm ups. Like well, I didn't see a lot of people doing that. Well, ninety percent of the roster are like twenty years old. <laughs> like they're all <laughs> they're all still invincible. When they somebody asked me at the end of the night, they're like, Hey, how do you feel? And I said like a 35 year old man who hasn't wrestled in three months and then wrestled three times in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I was going to say too, and, and kind of given the circumstances of, you know, doing the shows this way, um, we didn't have like the full roster. I mean, you know, like most of the guys were there, mm-hmm. you know, and kind of since it's been three months since there's been anything, and then we don't really know when there's going to be, anything else you know it's like you, there were like a lot of matchups that you wouldn't quite think we'd have mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know or it's like different kind of guys mixing it up that normally maybe weren't before that you know it's it's a good good time to kind of yeah again train and see who who works with who that you might not have thought of before yeah yeah and, th- and then there's some some irresponsible monster that mm-hmm. decided that me and bronco should fight each other <laughs> 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 you know just just for the heck of it so <laughs> there were a lot of bad decisions made on that yeah on that. uh me me versus bronco with no fans uh putting two members of the bro force on a team <laughs> and also putting chess flexer in that match <laughs> <laughs> we, i don't want to spoil too much we're actually going to do a reveal on oh the, i'm uh, sorry I'm no sorry. it's okay we're going to reveal a lot of the uh the the uh quarantine uh matchups uh, the teams because it's actually a lethal lo- a lottery uh, situation uh, for a tournament. So uh, that will be revealed. Uh, at, we're going to oh, schedule to actually put that on Saturday over on 2PW's uh, Facebook page. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, I, I can tell you that there is there's about two and a half months of matches <laughs> coming up here uh, that that's going on there. So it was kind of an interesting uh, uh, look at way to do things. You know, obviously things are kind of crazy figuring out what the next steps are things. And I'm glad you guys uh, come out and, and have some fun for a day and hopefully some stuff for the fans. So uh, what was the big, th- what was your biggest takeaway from the day doing it that way? What, what, did you, did you learn something about yourself? So I, I got to talk to some of the younger guys, which was cool. Like um, mm-hmm. I know that like miles and Isaiah Wolf and a couple of the, like the fresh guys, like, mm-hmm. like under a year um, were like, this is really rough. And I was like, like I and I, I like had to think for a minute. I'm like, oh man, yeah. Like it's until you wrestle tournament style, mm-hmm. like for a while, you. I don't think people get a feel for that. Like, yeah. I, I think you guys remember because you guys were manchild fans, right? Is that <laughs> we we were? But I only got to see him the first time that that show that I came out and saw you guys in the ladder okay. match and the cage match and everything. So, so like AON from Johnstown, like whenever I worked for them, they they cut their teeth on that Thunder Cup tournament, which okay. was a three three day long like tournament and you didn't wrestle three times you wrestled like the winner will have like wrestled seven times in the weekend so so like when when you get like brought in for that you know we were we definitely got used to like getting like we didn't pace ourselves either we were all young you know what i mean but like i think the first time you wrestle multiple times in a day like you're like oh my god (laughs) yeah it was 
I wouldn't even bump anymore. And you're like, hey, we wrestled seven times. And I'm like, I ain't bumping for anybody anymore. <laughs> I thought, I'll tell you what, I, I think like as far as like big positives, it was how, how well that company's run. And like, I know I sing the praises of that company like ab- absurdly often. But like between you and Marshall and everybody doing pictures and commentary and everything else. And like, I, when they told me how much was going to get fit into that short period of time, I, I honestly was like not optimistic about it being successful. Like as far as getting everything done yeah. and man, man, was I wrong. It was, it, it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's like, on a, yeah. Cause like on a good day, it's like, sometimes it's hard, you know, like it's having to chase people down to do things and stuff like that. But yeah, it was, yeah, it was, Every, everything worked out fairly, fairly well. <laughs> Sorg, it, it makes me laugh how much, like you, your presence on shows, like how much the guys like you, like everybody, and not not that I don't, like, but I mean, like, no one wants to disappoint you, like, you know what I mean, like, no, for real, like that is such a huge thing, like everybody's like, well, I don't want, I don't want Sorg to have to do this, or I don't want to mess up and him to have to do this, or I don't want to make Sorg mad, like it's so funny, it cracks me up, like even me, like I came to you with the thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because there was we... there, there was a conversation of like, hey, you know, the there's thing. no fans. If things screw up, you can that we thing? can that thing, it, it, and then there's a thing. I, okay, <laughs> I can say I've never had to reshoot a wrestling match uh, it was, before. It was like, hey guys, go out there and try stuff you normally don't do. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Famous, famous last words. Yeah, yeah thing, <laughs> man, things you're afraid of doing in front of fans. Ah, we can probably try them now. I mean, if it see, goes bad, if, nobody sees it, right? See if we get that in the meeting again, right? <laughs> except, except, except for the news in this instance. Yeah, yeah. potentially. Yeah. You know, I sure am shoot excited about this. Mm, let's <laughs> yeah. move on before we get the Mar- <laughs> Marshall Gambino sweating out there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, very inter- it's a very interesting time. There's a lot of good content that's going to come on with that, and, and it was a very interesting experiment. Uh, and and it's not the last one, guys. Trust me, you know whether it's two PW, a lot of other interesting stuff uh, in in the lineup in the in the in the coming weeks and months as uh, before. Uh, you know, we're we're still in this thing. Uh, I guess an update. I don't know that we've talked about much on this show. I think I meant to last week. Obviously, you know things were kind of. Uh, tumultuous last week to talk about you know wrestling but uh, uh, we are currently in this state at least in Pennsylvania in a uh, we may be allowed to have wrestling shows mid-July after mid-July if approved by the government basically Uh, and I just read a statement that I believe Tina shared today uh, that Ohio is saying pretty much flat out no boxing MMA pro wrestling until at least September. No ifs, ands, or buts. And in Pennsylvania, even if we got here in Pennsylvania, uh, we're talking about everybody needs a COVID test, um, you know, all these other things uh, in order to do that. And of course, the cost that comes with that, insurances and everything else that's going to come on basically makes that already thin margin for people trying to run indie wrestling shows pretty much impossible um, from it. Not like the- all, those, all those hoops. <laughs> yeah 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 it's, it's it's a it's almost like it's it's for for every good thing yeah. there's a yeah. you know a balance to that and, you know and i can't i can't really fault a lot of the the government you know i understand this is a safety issue this is an unprecedented thing that is happening right now and and you know they at least give an option <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, uh but also it's the athletic commission that is for all sports and ones with bigger budgets, and indie wrestling is kind of the redheaded stepchild of that. So I, uh, I would rather them tell me to piss off mm-hmm. than tell me, "Hey, uh, I hope you don't mind spending hundred dollars out of your pocket to go wrestle a show." <laughs> hey guys, I'm not here to pay to play. Okay, yeah. So yeah. no Pennsylvania, no Governor Wolf. I will not give you hundred dollars of my money. Or two hundred dollars of my money to work two shows a weekend. If you guys need me, I will be in West Virginia working for people where I don't have to pay mm-hmm. money to work. Yes, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of companies talking about that. I know that, like, I think three rosters that I'm on right now have already said, like, depending on how things go, like they'll just drive two hours south and, and they'll run anyway. We're gonna be a lot of promotion <laughs> just along that Mason Dixon line all the way down the way. <laughs> and yeah. and as far as the costs are concerned too, it's like 
you know, like say, what was it? It's like at least a hundred bucks a test, whatever, you know, which even like if you could run a full show mm -hmm. or if you had like a full RWA show of like 300 people, you know, I don't, off of ticket sales. Oh, maybe that could cover that. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, when it's like and it's again, it's one of those good news. You can do it. Bad news. It costs you money. But mm -hmm. good news. You're probably going to have a sold out show. Bad news. A sold out show now isn't the same as a sold out show yeah. before, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it's again, it's like all the, you, you know, you know two steps forward, two steps back or whatever. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Ronnie on this too. I would honestly, I, I would have felt better if they would have just said, guys, we're not doing it. Yeah. Because again, like you want to really get Zach Rango and let's get, get me on capitalism. <laughs> oh, so the rich, oh, no. oh, so the no. rich, so the rich promotions get to wrestle. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. Which I, I mean, what WWE can co start coming through town, you know, I, I guess. Uh, but, you know, but, but even it's questionable. Like, I, there was a statement. Like, what was that, guys? Let me get changed real quick. Hold oh, on. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yes. What? Where did Zach Rain go? I Zach Zach Rain was right there, but now I don't see Zach. Rain. Yeah. Uh, well, that was that was rather annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, let's not get too deep uh, in that. I don't want to get targeted. Oh, wait, there uh, he is. Hey, hey, yeah. guys, guys, we don't need to build any vendettas with anyone. Okay. Oh, that was a good movie. I love it. <laughs> anyway. I, Look, I just watched it again the other night. <laughs> anyways, yeah, it's probably it's probably uh, a good watch right now for context. Topical? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, very topical. Very, uh, 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 yeah. Um, okay. Damn it, I had it. Oh yeah, so you, yeah, your AEWs, AEWs. Well, even so, this is this is a statement that I saw. I uh, shared this in the group over the last week. Um, uh, it, it, the, so Triple H was talking about things and talking about how they were going to start testing for their uh, talents, which is like, to do it. what the, the fact hell? that they haven't tested them already is just yeah, yeah. unprofessional and completely mind blowing to on, me where on, I'm like on that level, on that level. Like I understand <laughs> like indie wrestling dancing around this yeah. because of budgetary concerns, but uh, it, you know, you are WWE and talking about how you, you care for your people and doing all the safety and putting up glass and, <laughs> <laughs> and considering all, all the strings you figured they had to pull to be a essential business anyway, and that was like two months ago, right? Two, three yeah, months ago. Yeah. So, and you would think that would be kind of rolled into that, that that was part of it, you yeah, know? Yeah. But, but now it's like, you're just finding out, oh no, it wasn't, you know? Yeah. Well then what the hell was, was going <laughs> on? Yeah. Well, some of, some of our boys up there don't have health insurance either. They're just like us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. That is unfortunately true as well. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I don't know. It's it, and, and the argument can be back and forth on how reasonable it is to do wrestling now with the, with the environment. And, 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 and that's, that's the thing. The things that have happened, the, you know, Ronnie, you've been on shows in West Virginia. Uh, you know, Zach, obviously, you with, with doing stuff with a promotion. Uh, you know, this is all like, thankfully, the discussions that I've seen is to say, if you're not comfortable with this, it's OK. And even some people I talk to uh, around these events have been like are still there, but still half and half on it for for whatever reason, you know. Um, so, you know, I me, I was worried about because I like I still don't want to don't want to go to a Walmart. Uh, yeah. I, I get weird going mm -hmm. into sheets and half the people don't have masks on. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, that's just, that's just me and that's my anxiety levels around everything going on. But, uh, you know, some, something about being maybe just because those people we knew or, or, or things like that, you know, yeah. you know, seeing a lot of familiar faces was, was, uh, uh, it helped ease back in a little bit. It was, but it was, I'll tell you what, like, it was weird because I, I did go back and forth on it, whether or not I was going to do it. Cause I haven't done anything really. Like I work as, um, I work as a security and like threat assessment specialist, like, like for my, <laughs> my like everyday job. So, and yeah, so, so ironically, is, huh? So this but is your wheelhouse, huh? <laughs> so yeah, but like, uh, like it was weird not shaking anybody's hands. Like yeah. we were bowing yeah. and like elbow bumping and stuff like, but it was still like people kind of kept their distance. They cleaned everything. So like it kind of put me a little bit more at ease. Do you know what I mean? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and that was a big thing. Of the, the, you know, those curious. Hey, we do have a video uh, that I will hopefully have up by the end of the week. Um, we 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 talked about because there were a lot of cleaning measures that were taken. Like it, it got wiped down between every match, um, yep. you know, all that kind of stuff. So it was it was a lot of good, a lot of good to make it, 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 you know to make people feel comfortable with uh, what was going on there. So uh, and hopefully people enjoy that. So and and that's the thing I, I I've I've said from the beginning of this uh, around all businesses. 
uh, uh, the people that are going to thrive right now are the ones that are going to be um, inventive, um, you know, creative with solutions. Uh, if they're affected by by everything going on, everything from driving by a restaurant, or ironically, the place where I saw midget wrestling uh, uh, several years ago <laughs> here in the area, and seeing circles painted in the parking lot so they can have outdoor seating, right? I mean, you know, utilizing those, seeing a Clark's concert as having at our drive-in, seeing a, even a pro wrestling show, I think, happened in West Virginia at a drive-in uh, theater of some sort. Like, that is the kind of stuff that's going to help move that ball forward, you know, until we are potentially through this situation uh, uh, to, to, to not, I don't want to call it normalcy, um, but just to kind of get back to some version of stuffed animals in the audience of baseball, uh, you know, whatever that is. So can we green screen. Can we green screen an audience? <laughs> you didn't well, see. Wait, 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 wait. Rob had an idea. idea. Had. Rob, Rob, were you the one uh, presenting me with the uh, old like a? Uh, uh, all... Oh, the uh, the AWA team challenge series pilot with the bad like 1990 era. Like CG, like just type up, yeah, like AWA Team Challenge Series pilot entrance or this something up. like that, and it's some bad, like it looks like Tron. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! You know? I'm gonna throw which, this up on the video feed for which you. Which for AWA only being about ten years behind the time at that point is pretty good. So, 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 <laughs> Zach, this is what he said that we should have done for the entrances for everybody in empty arena matches. <laughs> <laughs> so if we're, if you're on audio, it's the guy is walking up and and he's green screened on and there's like like two fake video walls of audiences and I guess is what is it's just a dark arena with no audience, right? Essentially, <laughs> so, I mean, for the but, but like like I compare the entrance to it's like you know you're playing WWF Warzone yes. or yeah. Attitude or something, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like the the. Uh, it, yeah, everything just looks completely fake, and it is. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. I'm down. We talked about, like, because, like, I have access to, like, some of the Eclipse stuff, because, like, the promoter, like, we've worked together forever now, and, like, it's taking everything in us to not just borrow the ring, and, like, our our initial idea, like, not too long ago was to get Corey futuristic and have him be run the promotion, and it be all time machine-like stuff, like... <laughs> Me and me and uh, Ryan Colby from uh, LCW were going to be uh, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. We were going to be the founding fathers. <laughs> <laughs> and we well, wanted Lincoln, to do. Lincoln we wanted to do like first NWA champ, wasn't he? Dude, my my submission is the Lincoln Lock. He was. Uh, oh, he, was he was twenty and zero. <laughs> Jeez! Oh so man! He got taken down from behind. Yeah. Mm. Hey. Oh, where, where? Bob, Bob. I, I was gonna like say that. he he passed away at a yeah at an untimely, relatively early age. Pearl yeah. Harbor. <laughs> oh, I oh. mean, you know, a shotgun kicked to the back. No, that's oh. a shoot. That's oh. a shoot. No, no, no. Uh, if there's never a, no more gun you, references. Yo, I think <laughs> we need to return up. Is the what was it the 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 match that was at uncensored whatever where it was uh dustin rhodes and black top bully oh, the no. king of the road match yeah. the oh road we're the not backwards. talking no 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 no, no. The back of a truck no no, no we're not talking Holy about that moly. oh we've, there, we've had our my time friend with that match. my buddy shane when he first got the wwe network he's like hey yeah. man you have to watch this match and so no, i'm no, watching it and i watched it, i'm like this is the worst fucking thing i've ever seen yeah. And oh god, I can't believe you brought that up because now yeah. it's haunting my mind right now. See, I'm just thinking, you know, it's like if you keep it on the, you know, keep things moving. It's <laughs> hey, just like but, WWE. What what did I say? Whoever is the most creative, yeah, and people are going to keep box. trying different things mm. to keep relevant while there's no like regular professional wrestling. In the majority of or, the of the United States, or which you know. which Japanese promotion had the 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 matches out on the water? Oh, oh, I it remember was, uh, sharing those. Yeah, and I want to all you got to do, like WWE, if they go far enough off the coast of Florida and they're in international waters. Yeah, <laughs> listen, <laughs> we're not. Can we not do wrestlers in bodies of water right now? Yeah. Can we please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. wait, yeah. I still yeah, can't believe Jericho is relatively fresh. Cruise. I still can't believe Jericho's still planning on doing his cruise. I'm yeah. like, no. I'm not no, buying that, that ticket. That's 
That's not a good idea. You may as well call it Corona Cruise. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> cruises are just germ farms to begin with, uh, right? I like, as we go, my, uh, 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 Rob has a hand over his camera and, oh, and has moved all over the cats. place. It's just... It's such a... It's like, like the rest of us are doing a podcast and Rob is just doing Blair Witch. Sorry. I'm just trying to catch up. Eventually, catch when, we, when we do what we learn, he's just going to be standing looking in the corner and then it's yeah. going to fade to black. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> speaking of which, speaking of moving on and getting to an ending eventually here, I want to give a shout out to our good friends at Slice on Broadway helping support Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a, nearly 10 years here. With us at Sorgatron Media, our good friends down there. Four locations here in the Pittsburgh area. And not all of you are here, I know. But several of you pass through because all roads lead to Pittsburgh. Let's be honest about it. Uh, especially in wrestling, it seems, these days. Uh, but uh, we're talking about mm-hmm. we, we were talking about, talking about some interesting there's history a, last there's night. There's a lot of construction on those roads. Yeah, there <laughs> is a lot of construction on those, but it's okay. Ronnie's keeping you safe. Um, but, <laughs> You're welcome, America. There you go. Yeah. Go check out our friends, sliceonbroadway.com, and let them know the Mayhem Show sent you. All right, with that, we're going to go to this quick message, and you'll, we'll be right back with the big question, and we're going to learn something, too. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. This is Jason Gore, and you're listening to Wrestling Mayhem Show. He's in the Flood City, I believe, right? He is in the Flood City. He's the one that informed us about what wrestling was happening in Johnstown. He's the one that re- introduced us to Manchild and whatever the hell else. I'm sure your name's come up over the years. <laughs> so, a- AON runs again. They uh, they started mm-hmm. running about a year ago again, and they've uh, they've been killing it. They've Good. like had sell out shows like con like every every month. Good. All right, let's roll with it. We're here. It's a wrestling mayhem show. We got Zach Rain with us, the White Rabbit, the the victim Zach Rain. Uh, the uh, <laughs> Ronnie Starks is with us too. Hello. Uh, and uh, Mad Mike. Hi. Oh. Hey, he's out there somewhere. There he is. And of course, Rob is still with us. And the and, yes. And uh, Kimball the cat. Yes. <laughs> She's currently kind of chewing on my charging cord after not having shown any interest in it at all. Is that why your video is not showing right now? <laughs> no, I was checking. So I was checking the text here. Real quick. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Anyways, it is time for the big question. I know we've done a version of this before, but I think we have context now that there's been a treatment of this is what an in your house uh, uh, redo would be like, you know, uh, and the treatment that they got for that. Uh, so, so returning to an oldie but a goodie. What old pay per view, um, mm. I think more set and theme wise, would you like to see return in the style of NXT's in your house? Uh, well, I'm gonna go with the example I've always gone with because we still have not done it. Mm-hmm. Um, this year for Survivor Series, especially with it being Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT. Mm-hmm. I want them to bring back the ultimate survivor match. Yes. I want an entire match full of survivor series style matches. It can be all mixed brands. Just make sure the feuds align Mm -hmm. the winners of those matches, whatever team they're on, they get divided into their brands. And the main event is a triple threat tag team match. With Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT. Like, and that, it's stupid that they haven't done this Mm -hmm. because we've had brands for a decade now. Like, and we've never done this, and it's always been right there. Seems so obvious. And and this is like the 30th anniversary of the one time they ever did that, too, right? Mm Yeah. And, and that was honestly, the advance of the Hogan Warrior stuff. It was a fun match too because yeah. you can build someone like you can ha- if you want to build NXT, have one person from NXT left mm-hmm. against like four from Raw and three from SmackDown. Like there are ways to do it. And God, it's just it's the perfect evolution of a Survivor Series match if the Survivor Series style match is played out. 
And here's the kicker. You make it worth something. Whatever brand wins gets number 30 in the Rumble. That would be cool. And whatever brand is pinned gets number one. I like it. Uh, Bobby and Ponder. (laughs) I consider them kind of the same answer, and I'm with them. Uh, Cyber Sunday slash Taboo Tuesday. Yep. Because, and this was a big thing a couple of years ago, they did a lot of the integrated with Raw and SmackDown, like live voting kind of situations. And to a point, they still do that, well, not currently, but the last live show I was at, they actually did that there. Like, who do you want to be in the women's tag match or something, right? And, and you pick your teams or something. Or or <laughs> what is the stipulation for this match, which are all just different names for a no DQ match? <laughs> balls count anywhere. Balls no count DQ. anywhere. Yeah. Street fight. You know, Hardcore something else. match yeah. or a or a regular match. They're just yeah. like, are you kidding me right now? Or the greatest match in professional oh, wrestling. Yeah. But can, I, can somebody explain that to me when when we have time, please? <laughs> well, can, I, can you explain it to me? Um, <laughs> um, hello. <laughs> totally have you like seen who's thing. involved? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's a man who has had a singles match for nine years, and a man who hasn't had a singles match in his career. <laughs> oh boy um yeah the, the, but no having something like that where you know and, and i feel like you know we're at this height of social media where you could really make it fun uh mm-hmm. more so than back when we couldn't figure out how to get the website to work 10 years ago for cyber sunday or taboo tuesday because we decided pay-per-views on a tuesday was a good idea for some reason honestly i can see nxt doing it and call it taboo takeover mm, i like that I NXT like taboo takeover. I could absolutely see it in mm-hmm. Texas on Tuesday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guys, I have mine. You ready? Okay. Uh, give me back Halloween Havoc, mm-hmm. and and I want the giant pumpkin that says NXT takeover Halloween Havoc. Can we get the Slim Jim sponsorship to, for the uh, for the polls? Like, goddamn uh, right we can, Ronnie. Oh, I, yeah. I will co-sign this with you. As long as we have the NXT costume battle royal in it, yes, absolutely. The uh, the uh, uh, NXT Chamber of Horrors, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get, know if you can fit that in full sale. Can we put who is the uh, who is the creepy guy that helped out Velveteen Dreams this weekend? I'm not, I'm not up on him. Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis. Can he just be yeah, the guy? He's great. Like he has to be like just the, the the guy that does the electric chair gimmick. Uh, because it just really he'll, he'll never blink, he'll just have his hand on the electric chair handle. Yeah, and just as he kills a man, he just never blinks. He's like, yeah. well, yeah. someone has to hold the handle up because when you're not looking, that handle will just fall and supposedly activate the chair, but nothing happens. Supposedly, any listen, any, any levers are great because it just gives Matthew more ammunition. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> all of this, all of this. Uh, Zach, is there anything you want to bring back? I they I, I keep trying to come up with a secondary one after everybody's and then everyone keeps taking my answer. Um, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the, to the world of the big question. I, I think mine's safe. <laughs> no, I uh, I know that they've tried to do bash at the beach. I always really liked it. Mm-hmm. Although I have wrestled at a beach, it I don't recommend it. I, <laughs> I, I, Do you the, have the, sand in all those wrong places? The the ring is like bumping on gravel and sandpaper it's oh, awful oh. What, what did you watch AEW's bash at the beach i didn't get to watch it now i really okay. want to, it, was, it, to it do was, that. um something it was interesting they had they had lifeguards for some unknown reason i like that idea actually i'm looking it up yeah. i can't remember what they did yeah, it was it was okay. It was no, okay. I I really like the Survivor Series idea like mm-hmm. a lot. So I'm on with I'm on board with that. I'm just gonna add like my tally mark to it. That that's, I, I've been I've been touting that fucking Survivor Series match for a decade now. Like as soon as we went to brands, I'm like, we can do this again, and Wait it would be easy. They even create a bragging rights trophy that the winning brand can have if yeah, you want them yeah. to hold up something. How about, how about, uh, I mean, it's not a WWE thing that's been done, but it's like my favorite thing ever. Uh, King of trios is mm, like my absolutely. jam. Mm-hmm. We have, we have 300 wrestlers on three brands. Yeah. Like we can make this mm-hmm. happen. I'm with you. On that. And you know what, and you know what to do? If you do King of trios, 
every trio has to be one person from each brand. That would be cool. I mean, the closest you had to that is the mixed max challenge, but like, man, you and, can do so much with and, that. And it'd be interesting because you could see like certain stables maybe you haven't seen mm-hmm. in a long time. You know, just uh, I mean, I can't think of any anybody, anyone that's totally active now, but uh, oh god, oh, yeah, I, I would love, I, I'd love to see blanking on it, but you might have guys that tagged a long time ago that haven't because either they broke mm-hmm. up the teams or they've been on different brands and stuff where you could get kind of a, a mix of that again. I, I would love to see you know, WWE would be like, if WWE would just go off and just say, hey, we're just going to do trios for a whole month and do a round robin tournament in New Japan style, right? Like that would make mm-hmm. me want to tune into all three nights of wrestling they do every every week, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but I feel like the ones that would be uh, closer to doing it is AEW, as much as they're influenced by the mm-hmm. Japanese brands. Like, yeah. Not under the current like TV deals or anything like that, but if they had something where you know there was an honor club or there was a yeah, but I, mean, I know they halfway have it with Fight TV with the AEW Plus, so maybe that that would be a selling point for that, and, and have these kind of special trio shows, you know, uh, uh, and have something big. Also, I don't think their roster is big enough, but it, but obviously they got mm-hmm. really, they can bring in whoever they want at this point, right? So, but uh, yeah, no, they, I would love to see something like that happen here. Um, uh, kind of stretch because I, 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 I think I think AEW is closer to be being able to do Battle Bowl. Mm. Yeah, that'd be neat. Like, mm-hmm. like that's what uh, that's another one that'd be really fun. Uh, for those of, those that don't know and don't remember, what was the Battle Bowl concept? Battle Bowl was. Um, Everyone, uh, just random teams, a random tag team tournament. A lethal, and, you mean a, you mean a lethal lottery like the quarantine challenge? Yeah. And, well, yeah. and then all the winners from the matches went on to what, like a battle royal or something like that. I think end. it was something like that. Yeah. yeah. So there'd be like sixteen guys in it or something or eight mm-hmm. or I forget what it was, but. Um, well, here, yeah, so I mean, so check, just checked in on the on the Wikipedia page. So they were drawn random on a lethal lottery. Uh, members of the winning teams would advance to the battle bowl and battle royal main event. And uh, that was, let's see, Vader, who was already the champion at the time of the show, received a, received a ring for winning the tournament. There you go. I want to say Sting won another one, too. And De- yeah, they DDP, have a couple. There was DDP, one, that was his gimmick for a while. There was one Battle Bowl event in yeah. 1993, but the concept was also a part of uh, Slamboree and a couple of Starcades from the looks of things. Okay, because so I was so. going to say, I think I remembered specifically Starcade. Yeah, because that was weird. Because for that to be their big tentpole pay per view of the year, sometimes like they would just do random stuff like that. Yeah, you yeah. know, like yeah. Huh, it was, so it, Starcade really lacked identity. I think for the longest yeah. time, yeah, especially after like WrestleMania started eating their lunch on being like the big wrestling event. And, right, and, and it's almost speaking of Halloween Havoc, it's almost like Halloween Havoc became their signature pay per view. <laughs> you know, because it stuck out. People, people yeah. really like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't understand why they didn't, you know, like we've had Hell in the Cell, what, for like a decade now? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know why they don't just call that October pay-per-view, you, you know, Halloween Havoc and Hell. Just do Hell in the Cell matches the whole time. You, you know, yeah. it's yeah. it's to, it, it would go with the theme, kind of what they're, uh, they're, they're, they're doing. Their branding is just so, like, we, like I, I when they started just showing, just, just making the pay-per-views the gimmick. Yeah. Right? Hell in the Cell, Elimination Chamber, like that, that really... I don't know. It, it's 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 stupid marketing to me. It's mm-hmm. it's. I, think, it's, I always felt like having multiples of the same match on any show or anything too close. It kind of kills it. Yeah. Like yeah. you know what I mean. I remember being on a show like a long time ago, and we we had built up to a um like a bull rope match, like before you know you have to tag tag the four corners sure. and stuff, and uh, and then oh like after building this up for like four months. The morning of the show, they decided to add a dog collar match to the same show, and it just like sucked the life out of the audience. Hmm. And it was so weird. I just think like I don't know. I feel like when you give them too close of something like yeah. that, it just it doesn't feel as special. And and also like when you have like say Hell in a Cell, they've got three Hell in a Cell matches or whatever, right? You're pretty much not going to have it any time the rest of the year. You know, so yeah. there might be points yeah. in people's feuds or whatever where they're culminating at a different point where, like, you know, in April might be a good time to blow off this feud with a Hell in a Cell match or a ladder match or something, you know. But because they've, like, again, they've jammed them all into one show. So <laughs> are you saying that, 
So are you saying that, and this yeah. may be radical thinking, that maybe well, you shouldn't start a feud yeah. with the last man standing match at a WrestleMania only to transition to a normal one-on-one -on -one match? You mean only if it's going to be the greatest wrestling match ever. Okay, as long as there's an exception. <laughs> as long as there's an exception to the rule. I mean, that's the only, you know, that's that's the only place to go after, I, after that. I, I still, <laughs> still don't. I still do not understand the logic of that, Matt, of mm -hmm. this entire thing, because yeah. it's not like, like, like Randy is saying that Edge can't hang in a one on one match. Yes. Okay, fine. I'll buy that, except their match at WrestleMania was 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was, it was the length of 20 Undertaker entrances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was the length of one Randy Orton rest hold. Like, <laughs> it was but, a long match. Plus, like, plus each of match, these if guys, this match isn't an hour and a half, yeah, it is built to nothing. And and then each of these guys have had their share of WrestleMania moments. So again, yeah. what else is there to shoot for? I don't know. Let's have the greatest match ever in a fucking random June, <laughs> you know. <laughs> pay-per-view with no people around in a backlash yeah, yeah. well yeah, in, in, in event hey. that joey styles is not good enough to call yeah listen if if saturday's taught me anything <laughs> it's is that yeah. you can always pull something out that will be crazier than the thing that just yeah. happened right before no. right, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> but that's a shoot brother but, uh, yeah. anyway so so from the chat where bobby fj town says uh nxt takeover lethal leap year as yeah did, did everybody get their their thing out <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> everybody. Oh wait, no, no, no. no. I, I, I was as far as the because you're saying the return of like a you know the what a set or a show or whatever. Yeah, yeah, a theme. Um, I'm not so much the theme, but I like the. Well, well maybe kind of because it only happens with like a couple shows a year. You get like WrestleMania. It used to be Royal Rumble used to have like kind of their own kind of real theme to. I mean, not theme, mm -hmm. but it would it would uh, they might do stuff like the well like, again 20 years ago when it was uh, when it was in new york and they had the cabs and they had all the you know like a localized mm -hmm. theme to it and there's a fucking reason why you can play you know smackdown or wwe 2k whatever and they have stuff like that mm -hmm. as like you can choose that stage you can do that because people remember that shit you yeah, know yeah yeah and versus, it's, versus it's, now like, it's just like it, it's all video screens yeah, like you could say Royal Rumble 2000 and you go, oh, okay, yeah, I remember that one, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so it's just like when, you know, and again, it wasn't the same every year. Like you had Backlash, you had Armageddon and stuff where you had those sets, but then you also had the sets within the set. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised that more places, and I know, I know there are companies that do it, but I'm yeah. surprised more companies don't have like a set event that happens, a set month every single year like obviously some do it like iwc has super indie yeah like eclipse has the uh chalice chase tournament like mm -hmm. there's some out there but like as popular as the royal rumble it is you think you would think that every company would have their own so, so you do have uh kswa does the battle bowl mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh rwa has yes. the same event every month every year but that doesn't really come i mean it's like seasons meetings is your december show uh march yeah. the victory is your march yeah. show like stuff like that but and sometimes they'll play into it, but not a lot, you know. And, and as much as we rag on it too, like the you know, like the the on the nose WWE naming, you know, like LSL, TLC, whatever. It's like at least you know what's on that show. Yeah. Whereas, mm -hmm. like, if you go, you, you know, uh, if you look you up like Unforgiven '98, you don't know what's on it. Yeah, you don't know what or or <laughs> Battleground. You know, it's like the yeah. fuck is that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what does I that mean? It doesn't mean anything. I used to really like um, absolute intense wrestling for that reason. I remember like, even as like whenever I was like a rookie, I used yeah. to always go out to watch that, the show that they had their rumble, like their version of it. In fact, I, I think I saw, I think it came down to chess flexor and, uh, <laughs> and Johnny Gargano the last time I actually got to go out there. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> it was a uh, gauntlet for the gold that they do. Maybe you guys thought it was another joke coming. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, wait for it. Sorry, we, we may have pulled the trigger on it's, that one. It's like you're setting it. You're, oh, man. oh, geez. Yes! Oh. We're getting way too inside uh. baseball. I'm just, I, I, just watched, I just watched your close-up happening on all the screens on delay in front of me. And it just freaked me out. 
Uh, the Instagram is especially disturbing because it's a vertical video. Uh, that's... <laughs> Damn it, I can't use any of these clips. Um, <laughs> all right, that's enough of that. We have a homework assignment. Uh, oh, God. That Mike enjoyed. Uh, our homework <laughs> assignment from Professor Jacob Edwin was... It was Sting versus Diamond Dallas Page, April 26, 1999. I think I got that date right off the top of my head. This was a Nitro. This was not the last match on the show. It was about halfway through the show, and uh, I I loved this match uh, by itself. Uh, uh, a little context I'm looking at because yep. one thing I nope, do like nope. about the network right now is is you get to see chapters on the show, sure. and sure. I see that we start with Ric Flair and the Mental Institution on this one, so mm-hmm. that gives you an idea <laughs> about where we're at in the uh, WCW yeah. history. So Mike. Let me- let me let me tell you about this match. Tell tell me a story about this match. Tell me about Sting and Diamond Dallas right. Page. So this match, it's actually pretty good. Uh-huh. It, it's 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 pretty good. It's um. They fucking went at it. It, it, it was it was Nitro, nineteen ninety nine. To be fair, I was not expecting much. Um, but uh, you know, for it, it's the best Sting and DDP match you're probably ever gonna see. Peak DDP. Yeah. Absolutely, but I I I don't know Peak DDP because I never really liked him too much as a heel, mm-hmm. which he which he is in this match. Um, and the match is the match is really good. Like, uh, it's got a clean finish, which is nice. Um, it it teaches you that the counter to any RKO or diamond cutter is just grabbing a rope. <laughs> like it's it, it's it's literally just, the, the counter is standing. Yeah. <laughs> the counter is stand. Wait, that's that's it. Ricky. You're not to do it out of the corner. I, I that's like the problem. I like that finish though. I, I no, like... I like the finish a lot too. Yeah, and I remember, I remember watching this finish live. Mm-hmm. But now, see, because I'm, I'm a bit of a good student. Um, I was trying to rack my brains. I'm like, I don't remember this legendary Sting WCW Championship run. Hmm. I, I don't <laughs> remember. I don't remember it. So, sort of what I did, I had I had an inkling, I had an idea in my brain. Because last week when we talked about this, we did over under number of run ins during the match. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert: there were no run ins in this match, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is and rare, how. rare for 1999 WCW yes, for sure. Absolutely, even a paper. But, but then I saw this was in the middle of the show, mm-hmm. and I was like, because spoiler alert. Sting won the championship from DDP hmm. in the middle of a nitro. Like I'm talking hour one and a half. In a fucking was was half. it in in the did it happen to be when Raw was coming on? Um, I believe so. I believe so. So that's that makes sense. But okay. So I so like you said, Sorg, there are chapters to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like. You know, let's just see what's at the end of this show. Sorg, do you know mm-hmm. that there is a second WCW championship match on yeah. this same Nitro? You know what, man? I didn't even have to look at the end. I was like, I bet there's a three or four way for the same championship at and the end of the Sorg, show. Sorg, do you know how long this reign of Sting lasts? An hour and a half. Yep, and he loses it thanks to the Macho Man Randy Savage helping out heal DDP. God, fuck this match. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Twenty minutes for nothing. And I looked. I'm like, this better not have been the last championship reign of Sting. No, oh. it's not. He wins it again in September and loses it in a month because he gets stripped of the title due to some bullshit with Goldberg. Oh, no. Can that we still stop probably the longest with these WCW the matches? <laughs> Can we stop with them? There is a reason this company is defunct. <laughs> They're still doing the same thing on a different brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But- 
Yeah. There's, there's a reason this yep. company went out of business. It so, made a lot of shitty choices. Yeah. Okay. If, yeah. If, a lot a lot of bait and switch. A lot of that. A lot of like. No, it, there isn't even bait and switch. It's just switch and switch at this point. There's no uh, bait, Zorg. So, it's like when you're playing Animal Crossing and you're fishing, but there's no bait on the hook. Uh, uh, Zach, what are you, what were your thoughts? You watched this today. <sighs> so I, I'm a big DDP guy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. I thought I remembered this match, but uh, I didn't remember it being as good, but maybe it was because like I haven't seen it in so long. But I was like, oh, man, this is like pretty stinking solid. And I'll, I'll tell you what I what I really liked was, again, like people were pooping on the ending. I thought the ending was like stellar because like Bill Collier actually was the one that w w used to hammer this into our heads was he used to say that like there's a there's a way to do things and you have to do it that way until you don't have to anymore. And then that's when you surprise people. And yeah, I think it was yeah. his way of being like, chill out until you know more and you get better and then you can bend the rules. But like, I felt like that ending, I didn't see that coming. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like I didn't expect the counter the way it was and all that. And I, I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it was just like a hook on the rope to, to not take the cutter. And then he pulled him back into the scorpion death drop, right? Right out of nowhere. And this is after a good series of false finishes, probably. Right. The opening was great. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that that was like as close to like an American strong style match as you could possibly get. Mm -hmm. Like, especially the first like four or five minutes. Awesome stuff. Like, seriously, like young guys should like watch that and like see how like basic stuff can be like still very cool. It was also they spent a lot of time out by the entrance, too. I, I thought it was interesting, um, which always is like, why aren't we, you know, the refs just hanging out there. We're not counting. There's all that argument, too. But um, but no, it, 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 it made it seem strong. I was worried because at the beginning of this match, I'm looking at Sting and Sting and Sting. And maybe it's because he knew, you know, from knowing that it was he had another match in an hour. It was he had a look in his face like like, what the fuck am I about to do? You know, he, he had the same look when he had to wrestle Jeff Hardy in TNA. Mm. Mm. Like here we go. <laughs> like yeah. I know, I agree. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but hey, in the meantime, they had uh, they had some good wrestling. Yeah, there there was another thing that he noted, and just recalling, and this may be my member berries uh, 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 going. But uh, I, you know, we uh, for years, years we've talked, we've we've watched Raw and kind of talked about how boring it is, right? I don't mm -hmm. remember ever being bored in this era of three-hour WCW Nitros. Nope. Or, no. There was a lot of... I, mean, I remember being pissed. Like, yeah. like, you don't, I, then, I, didn't, I wasn't always happy about it, about what was happening, and, but I wasn't bored. Sorry, but Rob. But the thing is, though, there was so much going... You know, they, it was all, like, really, for the most part, like, really short matches or other stuff going on to where it was just a faster pace three hours whether you liked what was going on or not yeah, you know what i mean yeah it's not like it's not like we're showing five minutes of a match going to commercial then a full segment of a match and then commercial and then you know the the end of the match in the first two minutes of a segment and then you know it's mm -hmm. it's it, it's a lot faster paced and like i said even if you didn't necessarily like what was going on and and they did some some shit at that time that was late like it seemed like at times they'd give up on that first hour of Nitro or it would be like nothing but promos and setting up stuff with no wrestling, <laughs> you know, in that and a first cruise hour. Wave match. And a cruiserweight match. Or yeah, or that at least. Yeah, but but there were times I remember where it was just, and, and this was at the height of the all the NWO stuff where they would have like the first hour was nothing but just, NWO bullshit with like you mm -hmm. know with like backstage mm -hmm. segments and and things like that to where it's like it might not necessarily have been stuff that dragged but just you know it's like oh at least this is you know at least it's gonna be over quick <laughs> that that era too like as much as it had negative stuff it I think it it enforced like one of my pet peeves which was I yeah. I I thought that they did uh what one of the things they did really well was the clear cut division lines. Like there were yeah. guys that you knew were only going to be wrestling in certain divisions, certain type of matches. And yeah. then anytime they deviated from that, it felt like a huge deal. 
like when a cruiserweight got to compete in something else because they did really well, you were like, holy crap. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, or like, even, I don't know why, like the, one of the guys that always stood out to me and that was Buff Bagwell. Mm-hmm. Like he was always that mid card guy. And then like, you could tell that point where we can't, ho- we can't keep him in the mid card anymore. The crowd likes him too much. Mm-hmm. And when he like yeah. finally showed, like he came out to challenge somebody that wasn't in his division, the whole place lost their minds. Mm-hmm. I always love, I miss then that. He'd lose. Well, I mean, or, but like, or when you would have like, is, guys like, like that, I, like I agree that they get a did. Shot, you know, so oh, sorry. No, sorry. Uh, I I agree. They did like separate the divisions very well, but that also, if you don't move anyone out of those divisions, then everyone's the same. Like you need to have. I th- I feel like you need to have some fluidity in your roster like tna ironically was really good at that yeah Mm -hmm. tna was really good that we may have not liked all the stories and stuff but x division kevin nash i wish that they would have done the not liked all the stories but but like we got world champion eric Eric young once in a while you know yeah exactly but uh sorry sorry, do you want to hear the ratings breakdown from from oh, that no. this, was, this was that era, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was. How, how did, I, I how did the work out? I love it. <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, Nitro did a did a three point nine. Okay, three point nine for that week. Raw pulled a six. Shit. Do you want to hear this Raw that obliterated Nitro? Do it. Are you ready for this? All right, here we go. I got a question after that too. <laughs> um. The opening match, Kane and X Pac against the Brood mm. in, in a hot two minute thirty five second match. D Lo Brown versus Val Venus in a hot three minutes twenty second match. <laughs> Triple H defeated Billy Gunn with with a less than seven minutes of wrestling. Okay. Mankind in the big show defeated Test and the Boss Man. Less than five minutes of wrestling. Mm-hmm. Ooh. The Godfather Union. beat Jeff Jarrett to not only retain the Intercontinental Championship, but win Deborah's services as a hoe. In, <laughs> in, I don't remember that. In <laughs> under two minutes. Oh, in wow. under two minutes, mind you. Uh, and the last two matches are both no contests. Bradshaw versus Ken Shamrock. No contest. Also, no time given. Thanks, Pro Wrestling Wiki. Assholes. <laughs> and, and the main event in a hot three-minute match. The Rock versus Shane McMahon. Jeez. No contest. Jeez. Now, was this, was this coming out of... I mean, I don't think anything big happened at it, but when was Backlash... Was that would that have been that? You're weekend? obsessed with backlash. Backlash? No, 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 no. no. Talking just, about backlash? Well, no, no. I'm just saying, was that like the the post? You know, like the the Monday after a pay per view or something? I I don't think so because and, and the week we're, before the and, main and, event and was Rock- Rocha versus Viscera. So and <laughs> and when was when was SmackDown? Wait, when was the on. SmackDown pilot? Was that like the week before? It may be. So wait, wait, wait. I got to, I got to, I got to hold, I gotta hold for a yeah. second because I pulled up WWE yeah, yeah. Network because I was going to see what the pay per view was around there, and I just saw mm-hmm. that there's a Best of the Nexus <laughs> that they just posted. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, Whoa. yeah, it's like the anniversary of the Nexus. Oh wow! Look at all. Yeah, those, I'm gonna watch that. Look at all those those armbands and unfulfilled careers. It's been <laughs> ten years. Holy shit! Jeez. Who, who's left out of Nexus? None Dan- of them. Daniel oh, Bryan. No. Oh, Titus. Titus. Brian, yeah. Kind of a no, wait, no, Titus was the next one. No. No, yeah, Titus wasn't when in was... this group. This person. Yeah, I, dude, I loved Wade Barrett. Oh, I was yeah. a Wade Barrett. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Jeez. Like, yeah, Sorg, there there wasn't anything, I don't think. Oh, you, you guys go I on because they... I'm just going to watch yeah. the Nexus. <laughs> yeah, we'll watch they are the man. young dying oh, oh, the main event of this is Barrett and uh, Randy Orton at Survivor Series 2010 was was nice. that when Cena had to ref it or something uh, yes it looks like he is hey okay. Sword, do you know what's on do you know what's on the week of Raw after this show what 
Nicole Bass versus Deborah in a nightgown match. Oh my! Ooh. Oh, I, I twelve wow. seconds long. Why do nobody I asked for that? that. No, no. <laughs> honestly, she lasted longer than I thought she would. What year was that? Just, just running down that card. Ninety nine. Peak Union. Ninety nine. <laughs> no, that wasn't the Union. I don't think. What's because that? remember, Big Show just showed up. Mm-hmm. Like in That's Paul did, White. Like yeah. in February. Big Show just showed up in February of that year. <laughs> Did he show up uh, during a cage match? Like, oh my god, it's Paul yeah, White. He, he, yeah, he came out from under the ring he and was big, threw... big nasty Paul White, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, do you know why he was called the Big Show? Mm-hmm. Why well, I don't even know what the mm-hmm. gimmick is. Because the initials are TBS. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Big- Big Show was Voodoo Kid Mafia before Voodoo Kid Mafia was cool. Mm-hmm. That's pretty funny. <laughs> All right. I like the Voodoo Kid well, Mafia. We're still waiting. We do have <laughs> another assignment from the professor. Ooh. Oh, my. <laughs> this fu- when do I get to give him an assignment? Of that? Ironically, Ooh. it's Deborah versus Nicole Bass. From- <laughs> <laughs> hey, 12 uh, seconds. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> wouldn't that be amazing? So here we are. Let's find out our next assignment <laughs> from the professor. Hello, my name is Professor Jacob Edwin. This is the Wrestling Mayhem Show's weekly assignment. Now, as the world's smartest professional wrestler, uh, some of the things that I can see and look for might be a little above your host and guest host head. Um, So let's let's dumb it down a little bit. Let's get a little more violent. Uh, This is probably my favorite ladder match of all time uh, that I wasn't in. Uh, This is July 1st, 2002. The Undertaker defending his WWE Championship against Jeff Hardy. Ooh. Please, okay, please okay. Mm-hmm. enjoy. Okay. This was American Badass. Okay. Undertaker. This, 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 yeah, I know this match. I've seen this match fairly mm-hmm. recently. This match is great. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. I, I alert, the match right this, now. this match is fantastic. It, yeah. I, I, I'm happy to watch this one again. This was I, this was seriously a perfect textbook example of how to build a baby face without without like doing anything to like make your champion look weak at all. It was amazing. Absolutely. I can like, still uh, hear JR say, yeah. reach for the stars, kid, make yourself famous. Yeah, like, like I, I still see like Jeff Hardy pulling himself up after the match and take her walking back and you think he's going to beat the shit out of Hardy again mm-hmm. and he just pats him on the back of the head like, good job, kid. Height. Honestly, Height. That, that was, honestly that everything take, for Jeff right? Hardy after this match plummeted for yeah. me. Yeah. Everything, everything involving Jeff Hardy, with the exception of Willow, with the exception of Willow, plummeted <laughs> after this match. That's, the, that's, the, that's the most sarc- like sarcastic thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> oh no, I love Willow. Oh no, no, you you should go back and check out the lore of this show when Willow was a thing. Uh, oh, it was the only thing that kept me going on uh, on Impact because ET three and Rockstar Spud hunting Willow in the woods. Oh, yes and. Please. Yes. I I can I can pinpoint and I think it was right around the exact same time. I can pinpoint when I tuned out of that whole product. <laughs> uh and it was um Nigel McGuinness getting the most votes for a title shot, not getting the title shot. And then they everyone got so mad that they had to give him a title shot and then they squashed him in 2 minutes. And I was like, oh. I'm out. The best in the world just got beaten like 3 minutes. I'm oh. out. What was it? Alexander uh, Wolf was it? Was that his name? No, um, no. Was, Alexander Wolf is was the guy in Sanity. It was something Wolf. They it was definitely Desmond something Wolf. Wolf. Desmond, Desmond, Desmond Wolf. Wolf. Which honestly, not a bad name. But well, no, Desmond Wolf was Nigel, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh boy. Now, now we we were talking about the like with Nitro with okay Sting wins the title and then loses it again the same show right? Did the same thing happen to Rey Mysterio? <laughs> Wait, was Probably. The, it was like because because I I want to say it was like the week that Punk was gone, you know, or after he would left with the belt. Oh, and they had a yeah, tournament yeah, yeah. yeah. Come up with the new champion, and, and then and John like, Cena was, won the belt from Ray. Yeah, and yeah, then Ray won it. Punk and came then back Cena, out. Yeah. And then Cena immediately challenged him for it. I just don't remember if it was the same show. Or I think it was. It was. Like, it was the same all night. of that happened yeah, at like once. SmackDown. Yeah. Or something. It was not only the same show. Punk. I think Punk came back after that. Yeah, he did. Yeah, right after the segment, he came back. Uh, Tina yeah. is saying, "What did the professor get from the dark web on you, Sorg?" Uh, and apparently, agreed to me for ponder. Well, guys, it's time to find out what you learned from wrestling this week. 
<laughs> Zach, what can you tell us you learned from wrestling this week? I learned that you should always make sure Marshall knows what's going on. Because <laughs> he's he's a lot more rational than any of the veterans. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Um, yeah, yeah, there's that. I don't know. Um, a lot of the vets liked it, so um, <laughs> super hentai at least. So that's super one hentai loves it. Mark. Yep, yep. Uh, Can I, I, I wish we could say what was going on, but I, I have know. to quote this for the guys in here just so they know. Whenever we yeah. were trying to decide whether or not we could talk about the thing we can't talk about. Uh, Elijah Dean said, we should definitely show everyone so they know Prospect Pro doesn't screw around. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, all right. Uh, uh, Ronnie, now, Ronnie, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> I'm going to go with my brother there and agree that the, the greatest storyline ever is about to happen at a place, <laughs> and I'm so pumped about it, and I'm not even involved with the fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go, there you go. Um, it's like it's like the Snyder cut of professional wrestling. Yes. Okay. <laughs> sword. sword. We don't even know what that sword is. Cut. The sword cut. And, yeah. and sword. There are no reshoots on that, so you never know. Mm. Mad Mike, what'd you learn? <laughs> I I I learned that. Uh, I never thought I'd say this. I miss Roman Reigns. <laughs> Whoa! Hey, that's I okay. Feel like, I feel like what? if Roman Reigns was around now. We wouldn't have Charlotte just, on three shows. Mike, it's that, okay. That I agree with. Mike, Holy it's okay. Crap. Pull up your Netflix and watch the first 10 minutes of The Wrong Missy. I found him. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Sword, can you tell me why I got chewed out so bad over the Oscar thing? <laughs> wait. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, you, wait. What did you say There's about our whole... precious baby okay, Oscar? Okay, no. real, wait. Before you get to that, related to that, Bobby F. J. Sorry. Town learned that Charlotte is losing the NXT title was a setup just for her to beat Asuka again on Raw and anger me, and that takeover was awesome. So I did want to bring up Asuka, and I was going to give you a little jab to figure out where what was going on with that. <laughs> so, Zach, <laughs> you got a lot of heat this weekend for something you said about Asuka. So... I and I stand by this. Okay. I uh you're about to get uh, a fan. Oscar is greater than three Charlotte Flares. And I don't and, and I was immediately met at six o'clock in the morning by Elijah Dean, who's told me, Zach, it's way too early to be doing drugs. Okay, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I am going to give you crap because Oscar is greater than six Charlotte Flares. No, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know, and this is this is where they thought they were gonna jump on me for this, and I wasn't gonna stand my ground. But um, she's in my top five favorite workers of all time, and I didn't say best, so people will run me down about that. Mm -hmm. But she's easily in my top five. She's my favorite female worker of all time. Um, her the her NXT run it might be my favorite run mm -hmm. of all time. So I stand by it, and I don't care. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite underrated matches of the last five years and, and it never gets any play at all even though it fucking deserves it is the last woman standing match she had with nikki cross yeah it was good it was it really was good. fucking great like mm -hmm. uh it, it was because it was around the time where nxt the women's division was kind of in flux because they had just lost a lot of people mm -hmm. and oscar was left to kind of shoulder people who, some people who weren't quite ready yet and they were all still good matches yeah they're all still good matches like oscar is still the only person to carry nia Jax to passable matches yep uh, i i am excited for backlash because they've had good matches they have good chemistry well, i think that match well, is gonna be good the first time they worked each other oscar literally just beat the brakes off her and it was yeah. fantastic it was, it was awesome. yeah I hope we get that again. I really so, do. Mm -hmm. This was the one thing that the only thing that made me mad out of all of it. What's well, Roden will ride me, you know, about stuff because we're close. But um, the the guys they all came out of the woodwork that were like, "Oh, you're you want you probably are one of those jossy weirdos," and I'm like, "No, I'm not at all." That's how much. That's how good Oscar is. Is she like, like made me care about that stuff? Like she's she's the man. <laughs> <laughs> all right clipping that one out uh <laughs> so 
<laughs> All right. What, 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 what? Oh, like, Charlotte. Good. We, we need a break. We need a break from Charlotte. Like, yeah. Yeah. We need, like, although That's I have to say, one of the funniest posts I saw this past week is that the, the NBA Charlotte Hornets have renamed their team to the Charlotte Flares and have already been granted an NBA final series with the Lakers. <laughs> so that's good for them. I wouldn't be shocked at this point. No. Yeah. So, uh, where are we at? Who, who didn't go yet on, on I, what you learned? I, Rob? I hadn't gone yet. Rob? I, I, I learned that I like this, uh, the, the, the kind of choose your own adventure kind of, kind of stuff that comes from the, having this the stuff that happened at the show this last weekend and kind of figuring out <laughs> how we're going to make something yes! work that didn't necessarily work and how we've brought in we've you know just mentally thought of dragging in like half the roster to make sense of you know, something that can't isn't allowed to make sense uh I don't know. <laughs> okay. You just presented me with a new way to present that one storyline too. Uh <laughs> the, the how how not having a crowd and and you yeah. know has, has we we wouldn't have been able to do that. Well, no. Oh, no, I would have never I would have never even thought to, about it. No, no. To Anyways. Retro, to to retroactively make something else maybe out of it. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know. That wasn't planned. And, and by all of this, we're talking <laughs> about uh, uh, Zeke Mercer and, and Stevie LaBelle having a shoot wrestling match, obviously. Yes. Right. Yes. We didn't see that coming. Yeah. You know? they, had a, they had a shoot yes. wrestling match or a shoot uh, uh, yeah, martial shoot, arts match. Yes, shoot, That's what all the references shoot, have been about this entire show. I'm just, yeah. just want to clarify. So <laughs> I know we've been very inside baseball and inside joke about this. That's yeah. what it was. And, and we're going to talk to Zeke next week about that, actually. So see, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that's all. That's all. Right, right, we'll right, right yeah. Zach? We right, can, Zach? We can, we can, we can Zach? that. I'm I'm legally obli- obligated to say yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, just don't miss the mark on it. No. Okay. And uh, from the chat room, uh, Bobby O says Oscar versus Ember Moon also very underrated feud. Mm-hmm. Um, Podner relearned that uh, pay per view should be under two and a half hours. Yes. Uh, yeah. and <laughs> geez, he's really excited about that comment. So, uh, so there you go. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Zach Rain. First time on the Wrestling Mayhem show officially. Where can people go find out what's going on with you? I am old in the grand <laughs> scheme of things, so just Facebook because I hate all that other stuff. Get off my lawn. <laughs> there you go. Uh, go follow him and, of course, check out a lot of his uh, uh, matches on Indie Wrestling Network, Indie Wrestling.us, uh, YouTube as well. Uh, great three-way match he had with uh, Zeke Mercer and uh, Miles Monroe actually uh, recently that I think got featured maybe on Grind City that's in rotation on Roku. Uh, uh, so so look out for that. Uh, oh, it was definitely on the watch along. One of the watch alongs for 2PW. Uh, yeah, like Ronnie Starks, are you still appearing on the Facebooks anywhere? Is that still happening? Uh, I still have the Facebooks. I know I'm supposed to quote, no, no. keep it kayfabe and not like post on Facebook, but what? Fuck that storyline. No, let so, me see uh, your Ghostbuster toys. Come on. Oh no, Ghostbuster toys. Yeah, 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 a bunch yeah. Of Ghostbusters No, no. Toys. I mean, I mean, love, let them show it on the Facebook. You don't have to show them now. We are, we already. Oh no, I mean, we I already can... did that spot. Yep. yep, yep. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, there they are over there. Yeah, oh, they're there in that mess. I got some baby Yodas over I there. I meant too. to Fuck. say, are you promoting anything on Facebook that's happening that you are involved in? Still, I don't know if you're still oh, yeah. doing anything. No, it, uh well I have that uh, that podcast with Tyler Klein we're doing that yeah we're figuring out a schedule for that yes yeah we gotta do another one and then uh, this Friday okay. uh, you guys can see me on Facebook Live for Real Shoot Wrestling at ten o'clock there you go in Morgantown West Virginia there you go so yeah Sorg I learned one more thing hmm. I just found out why that rod did so much better hmm. that was the dark wedding. Oh, with Stephanie. With I Stephanie. forgot that was happening right around that, that time. Because I was like, "There's got, there had to be something." Because I was just looking at the matches. It, I'm it like, wasn't the matches. Had, it was never there had the to be fucking something, but it was the dark wedding. Mm. That's that's okay. That makes a lot more sense now. Because that that's that's a that's a raw moment. Yeah, that's a fucking moment like yeah. that we all remember. Absolutely. Like okay, that makes a lot more sense now. 
Thanks, everybody. Hope you guys had fun. Uh, I, again, I will recommend, uh, we mentioned last night, uh, New Day podcast. Listen to that today if you want uh, some perspective on uh, things going on with uh, uh, you know a lot of the protests and, and things going on now with uh, George Floyd and Black Lives Matter. Um, I think it's a very good, I, I feel like it's very important to uh, kind of introduce it to a lot of people that maybe have not been concerned with that uh, mm-hmm. through the lens of professional wrestling. And I think uh, hearing those stories from uh, people you like uh, that you've watched and seen grow in wrestling, like the New Day, is it was a very powerful podcast, uh, that, that a very powerful hour. So I definitely highly recommend that. And uh, uh, hmm? going off that, I also highly recommend um, uh, Batman Beyond, uh, Fat Man Beyond, Fat Man Beyond, Smith. Fat Man Beyond with Kevin Smith and Mark Bernardin, where they talk about. Yes, all the Black Lives Matter stuff too. Good, like, good. Both, I li- I listened to them both back to back. Both excellent resources um, to educate yourself. Yeah, and what's going on uh, in different aspects, and to hear it from people who get are, who live with it and get real and emotional with it. And yeah. you know, it, it it's good to, it's good to stay informed. Absolutely, absolutely. That, that is Batman on back Batman. God, I can't say it. It's also a podcast. It should be in your feed. Uh, if you're into geeky things, if you listen to us rant about anime and Gotham on Monday nights, then that should probably be in your feed too. So, <laughs> thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.